in a surprising discovery, Perseverance found a rock with freshly exposed surfaces where pieces had been ripped out, even though it never touched the rock. After some sleuthing, the answer is clear, and it involves a supersonic blast. On this episode of Mars Guy. Following its latest rock sampling activity on the eastern margin or contact of the crocodilian feature that I reported in the previous episode, Perseverance traversed across to the western contact. This is a good strategy for helping to understand the extent and origin of the clay-bearing rocks found here. Here's Mars Guy for scale. There's a clear transition between the mostly sand and gravel covered, relatively flat terrain of Crocodilin and the much rockier and sloped terrain to the west. The rocks immediately in front of Perseverance have a very rubbly appearance that really contrasts with the larger and more solid looking rocks a little further out, so much so that you might expect the larger ones to be the focus of attention but the team chose to investigate one of the smaller rubbly rocks close by. Two sols after it arrived, Perseverance deployed its robotic arm to look at this rock using the Watson camera for a close-up view. I was surprised and a bit confused when I first saw the images. The whitish spots amidst a gray background have the look of alteration, like you'd see from the interaction of water, which is exciting, but why do these portions of the rock look so different from the rest of it? They look like they've been freshly exposed, in contrast to the more weathered look shown by the tan and brown hues elsewhere. Normally, fresh exposures have to be made using the abrading bit on the drill, and that was not done here. The sleuthing started by comparing the images from the nav cam taken immediately after Perseverance arrived with the ones two saws later when Watson was deployed. It's hard to see the place where the fresh exposures are, but more obvious are the pebbles that appear in the second image that aren't present in the first. The only explanation for this is that Perseverance used its gas dust removal tool, G-Dirt, just before it deployed the Watson camera. This has been done occasionally in the past in an effort to blow off sand and dust from a rock to get a better look inside. But this time there was no accompanying images from the front has camps to show this activity. The G-Dirt was designed to blow out the tailings from an abrasion patch produced by the abrading bit, all part of an effort to give the arm-mounted instruments a better look inside rocks, like what geologists use a rock hammer for. Some of the compressed nitrogen gas in the supply tank is transferred to the smaller plenum tank, which then releases it through a nozzle in three to four puffs of one second duration. Puff is a bit of a misnomer here, given that the gas exits the nozzle at supersonic speed, thanks to the low atmospheric pressure on Mars. That's about 240 meters per second, or about 540 miles per hour. This is the first time G-Dirt has ever damaged a rock, which is a clear indication that the rubbly looking rocks here are very weak. This also is consistent with being heavily altered by water and supports the visual evidence of alteration shown by the white spots, which probably are clay minerals, although carbonates, sulfates, or silica also are candidates. So in this case, the inadvertent damage caused by G-Dirt is actually a good thing, helping to reveal the rock's interior and qualifying it as a sort of rock hammer. Maybe now we should consider G-Dirt an air hammer. <laughs>